Welcome back to Math 30-1. In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to determine the angle measure from a trigonomic ratio. So in the start off here, the book kind of gives you three steps to follow, but we're going to just go quickly to class example number one. It says complete the following to solve cosine of theta is equal to negative 0.5, where we're between 0 degrees and 360 degrees. Now, looking at that there, I'm going to make sure we're going to be in degrees in our calculator. So I'm going to go to mode and make sure I'm in degrees because we're working in degrees. Okay? So we want to be cos negative 0.5. So the first step, what we want to do is figure out which quadrants it's in. So where is cos negative? Well, cos could be negative either in quadrant 2 or quadrant 3. So it's in either quadrant 2 or 3. Okay? Or it could be in both. Now it says, what is the reference angle for it? So in this case here, I am going to just look and we're going to find my reference angle, which is going to be in here. And we want my calculator. I am going to go here and I'm going to push my second button first. And then we want to go cosine. Oops. We want second cosine, and we wanted 0.5, and we push enter, and I'm going to get 60 degrees. So my reference angle is 60 degrees, and which quadrant is the angle rotation? So in quadrant 2, the angle rotation is going to be 180 minus 60, which is equal to 120 degrees. And in quadrant 3, it is 180 plus 60, because we're going 60 from 180. And that's going to be, oops, in quadrant 3, we are 180 plus 60, which is going to give me a total of 240 degrees. Okay? Now, for question number 2, it says, given the sine theta squared can be written as sine squared theta, solve the equation where sine squared theta is equal to 0.5. So what I'm first going to do, and we're looking again in degrees between that there. So here again, I want to figure out which quadrant it is. But in order to do that, I know that sine squared theta is equal to 0 0.5. Well, I just want to figure out what sine is. So sine theta is going to be equal to the square root of 0 0.5. Now, we could have either a positive or negative there. So when I'm trying to figure out which quadrant it is, we could have our sign being both positive or negative. So we could have in the positive, or we could have in the negative. Oops, more like that. Okay, for our sign. So we want to figure out what that is. So I'm going to just grab my calculator. We're going to go second sign, and I want 0.5 to the one over two, or square root of 0.5 and I'm going to end up getting it is the same as 45. So I put in 45 it's 45 degrees is going to be my reference angle. So each of these is 45 so I'm going to end up getting we could have 45 as 1 because my reference angle is 45 then we have 180 subtract 45 we're also going to have 180 plus 45. And then we're going to have this one right here, which is we're 45 from 360. So 360 subtract 45. Okay? So we combine all these together. I have 45. And we're going to, so theta is equal to 45 degrees. We have 180 minus 45, which is 135 degrees. We're going to have 225 degrees, and we're going to have 315 degrees. And those are all of my possible solutions. So now let's look at cotangent of root 3, and we're looking between 0 degrees and 360. So now looking at this, I want to first make this into tangent. So cotangent is the same thing as 1 over tan, or the reciprocal. So we're going to have tan x is equal to 1 over root 3 because tan x is going to be the reciprocal of cotangent x. 
Now I'm going to look at which quadrants are possibilities. So for tan being positive, if we look at our cast, it is either here, so we have C-A-S-T, and here, because C-A-S-T. So those are my two possible solutions once we find it. So now I'm going to plug in my calculator. We're going to go, uh, I'm going to just go 1 divided by second square root 3, and we have 0.57. I'm going to store that now. Push this button down here. Store that as X. So it looks like that. Now, we're going to tan that. So I'm going to go second. Hit my tan button. And we're going to put in my X value. So I end up getting 30 degrees. So we know X is equal to 30 degrees. Now, where is this possible? We could have it here 30 or here 30. That's just going to be my reference angle. So my possible answers are, well, 30 degrees and then 180 plus 30. So my possible answers are x is equal to 30 degrees and 210 degrees. Okay? So now let's take a look at class example number four. Same idea here, determine of the measure of x where we're having 0 is less than or equal to x and 360, so we're in between 0 and 360 degrees. I look at this here, we're looking at secant x, that's the same thing as cosine and the reciprocal of that. So it's going to be 1 over negative 1.2631. Okay? Now I want to know when cos is negative, which quadrant are we in? Well, when cos is negative, I'm going to be either here or here. So we're looking at these reference angles we need to find. So I find my reference angle, and it's going to be, we push our second button, then I'm going to hit cos, and we want x, which is 1 divided by uh, negative, oh, we don't need the negative, delete, because we know it's negative, 1.2631. Close my bracket, and I'm going to get 37.6 degrees. So x, my reference angle, is equal to 37.66 degrees. Okay? Now, I want to know what are going to be my other angles there. So I look at this, I have 180 minus that. I'm going to just store this as x. So once again, I hit my store button just above the on, store as x. So I'm going to go 180 subtract x and that gives me 142 so I know one value is equal to 142.3 degrees and then I'm going to add that to 180 so I'm going to go x plus 180 for my other one and that's going to give me 217 degrees so those are going to be my two answers for that one now let's take a look at class example number five. It says determine the measure of theta between zero and 360 degrees. So we're here we're going to look when we it says when cosine of theta is equal to zero. Well when cos is equal to zero that means there's absolutely no. That means it's got to be on my y-axis. So when cosine is equal to zero we are either here, I'll get a highlighter for that, we're either going to be here, or we're going to be down here. So my x is equal to 0. Now, as soon as I look at this, there is no angle. So this one right here, we don't even really have to calculate. Since this is 0, this is going to be 180, this is going to be 90, and this is 270. So my answers are 270. It is equal to 270 degrees and 90 degrees. Okay, so those are my two answers for this one. Now let's take a look when we're saying when uh, cosecant uh, is undefined. So I'm going to first switch this around. So this is going to be sine of theta is equal to 1 over something here. 
to make it undefined? Well, the only time that could be is when sine is zero. So I look at this here, because we can't define divide by zero, so that's going to be the only time where that's undefined. So my height is zero is this, because we can't divide by zero, so it's going to be on the x-axis. So that's going to be either zero degrees, 180 degrees, or 360 degrees, and those are going to be my three answers. So now we're going to do the same thing, except this time we're going to be working in radians. So let's take a look at class example number six here. It says, in each case, determine the values of theta to the nearest hundredth of a radian. So we're here we're looking at cosine of theta is equal to negative 0 0.5, and when it's between 0 and 2 pi. So as soon as we see 0 and 2 pi, that's the key thing there, that 2 pi, we automatically know that we're talking about radians. So I'm going to change my calculator mode here again, and I'm going to put it into radians. Okay? So let's take a look at this. Here, I have cos theta is equal to negative 0 0.5. So we're still looking at cosine. So same thing. Step one, where I'm going to make my little diagram here. And we want when cos is negative. So that's going to be here and here. Okay? And find the reference angle of that. So I go back. I'm going to go second cosine. And I want to be 0.5. So I get 1.04, and I'm going to store this as x, okay? So we get 1.05, so I end up getting 1.05, okay? So that is my reference angle of theta. Now I want to find my other angles, so remember this is pi, so I'm going to have to go pi minus 1.05 and then pi plus 1.05. So that's going to give me the same thing as pi minus 1.5, pi minus 1.05, and my other one's going to be pi plus 1.05, which will give me pi is 3.14. So this is going to end up giving me uh, 4 point, oops, sorry, 4.19 is going to be this one. And this one right here is going to give me 2.09. Uh, okay? So those are going to be my two solutions. And these are rads. Okay? So our last one here says, in each case, determine the exact values. So I'm going to look at this one here. We're going to do the same thing as we did in the other one. So we're looking at sine, and sine's positive. So I'm looking here. We want to be either, move that over. It's going to be here or here. Okay, because it's positive sign. So I know I'm in quadrant one or quadrant two. And I look at this here. So my reference angle, we're going to first find my reference angle and we're in terms of pi. So I'm going to go second and we're in, going to go sine and it's going to be 0.5 or one over two. Now that gives me that there, okay? But I want to convert that into pi's. So what I'm going to do then is divide this by second pi and then put this into a fraction, okay, which gives me 1 over 6. Now the reason why I do that is if I look at this number here, I know this number is when it's something times pi to get the radians. So then if I divide by pi, then I could just multiply it in. So this is going to be the same as my reference angle is... Uh, 1 over 6 pi, which is the same thing as pi over 6. Okay, so now I'm just going to multiply it back in. Now, we have one angle is the reference angle, and my other angle is going to be over here, so we're going to end up getting pi minus pi over 6, which will give me 5 pi all over 6. Okay, because this is like 6 pi over 6 is the same as 1 pi. So, theta could equal to pi over 6 rads and 5 pi over 6 rads. Okay? I'm just going to do one more here. We're going to look at secant of 1 or negative root 2. So first of all, we're going to put this as cosine because secant is cosine and that means we have to take the reciprocal of that. 
and it's negative 1 over root 2. So we're looking at the negative here. So in this case, if I do my little thing, we're going to be cosecant. We want here and here, so we want that angle and that angle. Okay? So I'm going to find my reference. So we're going to look. I'm going to put in a uh, second cos, and that's going to be 1 divided by root 2. which gives me 0.758, so I'm going to store that as x, and then I'm going to once again, so this is what it is when you multiply pi in, so I'm going to divide that by second pi, and I'm going to get 0.25. So 0.25 is the same thing as uh, 1 over 4 times pi, which is pi over 4 is going to be my reference angle. Okay? Now, I look at that, we have 180 minus pi over 4, and then we're going to have 180 plus pi over 4. Or sorry, so we have theta is equal to pi minus pi over 4, and pi plus pi over 4. So I'm going to end up getting 3 over 4 pi, and the other one is going to be 5 pi over 4. And those are going to be my answers. Okay?